Hey, Scruffy. Not day, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, ready for dinner? I'm about a half hour early. Just so you're sleeping until just a minute ago. <clears throat> so, you're going to feed you earlier. But you're sound asleep. Yes. Pretty hot right now. Okay, got the glove on. So, as predicted, it was really hot today. However, it did not hit triple digits, which is good. It was a possibility. But fortunately, yeah, we didn't get nearly as hot as they had predicted. So it's hot today, but yeah, not as, uh, my whisker I think just came off. <clears throat> but yeah, not nearly as hot as, uh, they had, uh, predicted. You know, there's the whisker on the ground there. So this just fell off. <clears throat> so I presume tomorrow is also going to be hot, but not as hot as uh, today. And then I think it's supposed to start being nicer again. So it's going to be warm, but not ridiculously hot like it is right now. <clears throat> so I'm sweating right now, just sitting here. <clears throat> and I've been sweating in the house, because it's really hot in the house too. I didn't do any extra, I didn't, didn't go out for a run or a bicycle ride today because I knew it was going to be too hot. And I needed a rest day. I actually had trouble sleeping last night again. So once again, I think it was past sunrise before I got to sleep. So I ended up sleeping in so, I think it was a little before noon, so I only got a few hours of sleep. So... Just pull ups this afternoon. But yeah, that's about it. Because I got up so late, you know, I was trying to get things done, and I was thinking today would have been like uh, this out late afternoon would have been a good time to water the garden. Didn't have time. <clears throat> so I think I'm overdue. Really for the front yard at least, I think. It's been over three weeks, maybe. Maybe more. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely have to water it after this heat wave.
So, what else has been going on? Oh, I got a letter in the mail from, uh, local state tax agency. They dispute it, uh, or they claim I have an error on my return, tax return. I'm not sure how that happened. So they said that the amount, the amount I transferred from my uh, federal was not correct. They said I made a mistake transferring the number. <clears throat> and I don't know how I do that since uh, I use TurboTax. So TurboTax, I think, was supposed to transfer the number for me. So I kind of presume TurboTax knew what the number was supposed to be, and it wouldn't transfer it over incorrectly. So my thinking is TurboTax may have uh, screwed up the calculation, or or uh, again screwed by the tax agency, which is certainly a possibility. So I don't have a tax guy. I've been through that. So I lost my tax guy because he retired and I couldn't find a tax person that was uh, taking on clients. So I had to go it alone this year. So I think I'm going to just have to accept. So fortunately, I'm not getting audited. It's just yeah, they decided yeah, you you owe more money or taking it out of, out of your refund. So yeah, fine. That's better than no audit, I think. But I'm thinking, yeah, I need to find a tax person. <clears throat> so I need to set some time aside to start interviewing a tax person soon because I don't want to wait too long again. So I thought I started early last year, but it wasn't early enough because everyone said, no, I'm not taking on clients for booked. So I think, yeah. <laughs> I have to do it soon. Unfortunately, yeah, the, the other big financial problem thing I've been dealing with hasn't uh, made any headway, so I haven't heard back from any other legal firms. And I'm getting notifications that uh, the geopolitics are getting worse, and I may be forced to lose uh, my investments completely. Which looks like it's the likely outcome. I kind of presumed that was going to happen, which is why I had the insurance thingy, the hedge. But, and that's why I'm mad and screwed, because I couldn't claim on my hedge. So I'm um, actually really, really screwed because the hedge is supposed to protect me from the worst case scenario and uh, the worst case scenario happened, but I don't get to collect. So I'm out everything plus extra because of the way the hedge worked. Because I had to pay for it and then there's a technicality where I actually sold some insurance to buy more insurance and they were able to claim the policy against me but I wasn't able to claim the policy against them which is really unfair which is why I need a lawyer. You know, Scruffy agrees, right? So let's just give me my food. Okay, I think it's food time.
Oh boy, I'm dripping sweat right now. So, yeah, because I got up late, I didn't see Scruffy sleeping on the table this morning. So, around lunchtime, I saw Scruffy was sleeping uh, out here near the water bowl. <clears throat> I thought maybe he was sleeping near the water bowl because he wanted his water, but since he was asleep, I didn't want to wake him. So, I ended up doing a few other things before coming out just to see if he'd wake up. I left the blinds open so you'd notice that uh, I might be coming out. <clears throat> and then finally he woke up, and then I noticed he had woken up. And uh, yeah, so I brought out the water, and he was conflicted today. <clears throat> so. Yesterday he uh, he won the waiting game. He basically pretended he was asleep or was, and wasn't going to come towards the water, so I'd go back in and he could uh, drink without me being next to him. <clears throat> Today, yeah, I played the waiting game again when I put down the water and he backed away. It looked like he wanted to wait for me, but because it was so hot, I think he wanted the water, so I was uh, going to try to wait him out a little bit longer. And then eventually he did come to the water, and I think I flinched a little bit, or I, I think I was uh, panning the, ca uh, the camera, and it freaked him out enough that he uh, scurried back. And then I wait, continued to wait, and then he finally came back again. And this time he actually take, took a drink of water. Um, I think there was some background noise as well. I think he, uh, I think there was like a siren or something that went off that may have made him a bit nervous. And then just he didn't seem to like me being there. So he took a fairly short drink of water compared to other days, and then he ran back. Uh, he actually uh, went really far away, and he uh, walked under the big table somewhere where I couldn't see him. I tried to wait him out, so I actually waited a few more minutes. I actually decided to sit in his chair here, and uh, I actually opened the screen door once and closed it just to see if I could psych him out, make him think I went inside, but he didn't uh, take the bait, so he knew I was still sitting here, I think. So finally I went back inside, and the moment I went back inside, he knew, and he came right for the bowl. And finished his uh, drink of water. So yeah, he doesn't like me out here, except at dinner time. And then, yeah, I did pull-ups late this afternoon, a little bit before dinner. Didn't see him. I think he was here sleeping. And then uh, I wanted to feed him early just because I got things I want to do tonight. I don't want to feed him, feeding them off. But he is asleep. And I don't really feel like waking him, so I thought I'd uh, see if he'd wake up in a little bit. So I tried to do a few other things and wait a little bit longer, even though we were still like a half hour early. Um, he woke up, yeah, about a half hour early, and then, uh, he saw me. I, he, he saw I was looking at him, and so he got up. And so I brought up the food.
hear, hear a bird chirping right now. So yesterday on my bike ride I saw a single quail perched on a signpost. The signpost uh, to mark with one of the branches in the trail. And it was out kind of in the middle of nowhere. And the quail, you know, was perched on top of it all by itself. It seemed kind of out of place. So for some reason I started thinking about the classic uh, cartoon like, you know, from Warner Brothers or MGM or one of those uh, major uh, studios from the <clears throat> roughly from you know the late 30s to the through the 50s early 60s. This, yeah, I was trying trying to remember if I for some reason I have a vague recollection of a you know, funny cartoon about a quail. Obviously, it was like a one-off. It wasn't like a major uh, character like Tom and Jerry or uh, Daffy Duck. Or, you know, Chili Willy. I guess I should be thinking birds. Not, so uh, Tom and Jerry, not birds. For some reason, I was thinking there, there may have been a classic cartoon from that era about a singular quail, maybe somebody, you know, some the protagonist or something was trying to get like a roadrunner cartoon or something. Uh, I think it'd probably be more like a humanish uh, protagonist, but I couldn't place it. I probably should search on the internet to see if there was such a cartoon or if I'm just imagining it, uh, mixing it up with some other cartoon. But yeah, I don't think the quail spoke. I think they played with uh, the cock quills. I don't remember the, the thing on the, 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 the long feather at the top of the head. So I think the animation was playing, you know, playing with that a little bit. But yeah, I think I vaguely recall yeah, the protagonist was trying to get rid of the bird or something. I think it was, the bird might have been annoying him. Maybe it was making noises, I don't remember. Or maybe it was just not where it wasn't supposed to be. The person was trying to get rid of it. In typical fashion, uh, the protagonist keeps failing. I don't know, I guess it doesn't have to be from the 30s and the 60s. It could have been television age, so, or early television age, so it could have been. Um, 60s and 70s, maybe. I doubt it would be in the 80s or beyond. Yeah, animation has you know, very distinct periods. You can very, you know, very different uh, levels of quality and animation styles. Part of its budget, so what we call the golden age of animation is basically roughly uh, 30s to 60s, is the uh, animated for movies uh, for the movie theaters. I need the balls for Scruffy. <clears throat> so the quality and level of detail is a lot greater than. Uh, what was made afterwards. And so when the television area came in in the 60s, animation suddenly got really cheap because they were trying to do it on a fraction of the budget.
And then I think it was the late 70s ish, early 80s. A bunch of censorship rules came in and kind of kept persisting until I think uh, almost into the 90s. I think. Yeah, so basically, you couldn't have violence and, and cartoons and. There's a lot of censorship eff uh, efforts going in, and then also this is one of the big uh, push to create toy lines also came in. So the, the style of cartoons, uh, particularly in the 80s, is very different. And then we get kind of a mini renaissance in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, where the television quality starts getting much, much better, and the uh, quality of cartoons it's no longer about selling toys necessarily. So you get things like uh, DuckTales and Tiny Toon Adventures and Batman the Animated Series. Okay folks, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.